people, especially with age, are afraid of clot formation or thrombosis. Also, pregnant women who have physiological hypercoagulant condition, they are facing an increase in clot formation. So how can we manage, how can we predict that in this person uh, we could have very unpleasant events in future? Probably you heard a lot about genotyping when we are checking the genes and looking for some changes in genes, what we call mutation. I'm Dr. Olena Berezovska and I'm welcoming you at my channel. And today we're going to talk about testing for thrombophilia. You probably heard this expression or this term thrombophilia. Uh, the term thrombophilia is actually related not to disease itself but to condition when we have um, increased level of clot formation. And it could be also a disease, uh, usually hereditary or um, con congenital disease, associated with increase of predisposition to thrombosis. So thrombophilia doesn't mean that you're going to have thrombosis, but thrombophilia can affect your body and in some condition you can have a higher risk of clot formation it's, and it's important to know. We have also acquired uh, thrombophilias uh, and you don't see it too often in patients but again it depends on your condition so if you have let's say uh, inflammatory problems like some kind of inflammatory disease means inflammation in your body or if you're obese or if you smoke or if you have cancer uh, you already have a high risk of throm formation and if you have thrombophilia this risk increase even more. That's why also we need to know if you have this high risk or not. And there are so many different types of thrombophilia and they not all even described properly in medical textbooks because it's a new era because we start using genotyping, we start looking for genes. So what actually genes doing in relation to thrombophilia? A process of clot formation and dissolving the clots, uh, we call it coagulation. Uh, it's a very complicated process and we have 12 factors, uh, it's mostly proteins, that participate in this huge chain of chemical reactions and um, which has lead to clot formation and then to different like to dissolving this clot because you know in our body we we have clot formation constantly but again it's always balanced that's why we continue to live we have no problem but sometimes this balance could be damaged under some conditions and yeah, then we will have even serious big clot formation in our uh, veins vessels and especially veins because veins have specific structure and most of them have no muscles that's why the blood can stay in veins longer but also we have clot formation sometimes in uh, arterial uh, vessels that's why also quite dangerous situation so when we're talking about genes what kind of role of these genes so we have uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes. So we have usually two genes related to some specific condition. And um, these genes are responsible for production of proteins. And proteins can play a very important role in uh, clot formation and anticoagulant uh, formation. So it means like we have different types of proteins. So if there is... Um, uh, damage of the gene, then uh, production of uh, protein could be also vulnerable and we'd, we could have deficiency. But again, when we have uh, only one gene um, with mutation, another healthy gene could actually continue to do proper job and this condition we call heterozygotic. And this condition usually not so dangerous like another one when you have two damaged genes. So you have homozygotic condition and 
uh, thrombophilia quite often in homozygotic uh, situation, like when you have homozygotic condition, it's worse than we have mix of genes. That's why sometimes it's important to know what kind of condition you have, especially when we know that you had thrombosis before or your closest relatives had some cardiovascular accident related to thrombosis. We can do in these cases this genetic uh, genotyping, like genetic testing. Again, there are so many variants of uh, genes mutation that it's even like difficult to say which mutation it could lead to a clot formation. That's why we don't know a lot, but we know mostly about five most um, learned, I would say, learned quite widely conditions related to uh, factor five, it's Leiden's factor, and there are different vari variants, but we usually say about F5, G1, 69-1A, it's a long, like, you know, gene. And also, there's another one, a factor 2, or we call it the prostrombin gene variant, F2. Also, we have uh, a couple mutation, but only one is related to high risk of thrombosis. We have protein C and protein S deficiency, if, and we have AT or antithrombin deficiency. So these five um, hereditary thrombophilia, they learned the best, and we can test this type of thrombophilia in patient. And it's important because, as I said, uh, this type of uh, 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 thrombophilia can lead to clot formation. We also have acquired thrombophilias from some of them and the most known is antiphospholipid syndrome. Also antiphospholipid syndrome is not necessarily the same like we have non-obstetric and obstetric but also some different subtypes of this syndrome. And it's very important because sometimes especially when you're pregnant uh, you might have um, complication, you might have some pregnancy failure, even fetal loss, and quite often doctors say, oh, it's because you have this high level of antibodies, so you have antiphospholipid syndrome. But I will talk about thrombophilia during pregnancy in another video. So what actually you should know that um, in most cases we, we don't do any routine genotyping. Why? Because we can get so many different variants of mutation and we don't know what to do with this variant. So if we get some, for example, uh, it depends also on the lab, what kind of testing uh, the lab can offer you because some of them do a specific, like they're looking for specific gene mutation. Some just look any mutation and when they give that you have some mutation in your gene and you don't know what exactly kind of mutation it can lead to wrong um, diagnosis, to wrong decision and that's why it's very important to understand that it's not easy to make diagnosis just doing the genotyping. So how we actually predict if you're going to have thrombosis or not? Unfortunately, we don't have like universal test. We can start from uh, coagulations, from tests like, you know, we call coagulation. So we can measure the level of uh, different factors and then see if they elevated or decreased and it gives us some information. We are learning your history. If you had thrombosis in the past, and usually it's main thrombosis, the right condition when actually the thromb uh, is formated in um, in uh, arterial vessels, but mostly in veins, and usually in adults, it's in legs. And uh, if you had such condition, we have to find out when it's happened because it could be related to your problem with strong formation, or it could be related to some other problem. For example, you you had a very high dosages of estrogen or even the hormonal contraceptives or you were immobilized so you couldn't move because you fractured your leg for example. So in these cases yes you can have high risk of, of clot formation but it's not because you have some gene mutation.
So in this case, usually we don't do any genotyping. But if we find out that some of your closest relatives, like mother, father, sister, brother, died or had a cardiovascular event before 50 years old, uh, we can dig deep and find out what actually happened. Um, was it related to uh, maybe some other members of family had this, this kind of problem? Uh, if uh, I talk to some patient and I hear that, oh, my grandmother died suddenly because of thrombosis, uh, you know, I say it's kind of physiologically normal to have thrombosis in this age, so this is not a risk factor. But if somebody says that my father or my brother died at 40 years old because of heart problem or any other kind of cardiovascular event, then you have to dig deeper. Family history is quite important addition to make diagnosis of thrombophilia. And then again also, uh, we should understand that some factors can have different action. So if there is normal level, they, they can play, for example, uh, the role of anticoagulant. So be against clot formation. But when they become elevated, we have different picture. Uh, as I told you, it's a very complicated um, system in our body, in our blood, but it gives us chance to live and have this balance between all factors. Uh, also, you should understand that routine testing, we do not, um, routine testing for coagulation factors and also for genotyping uh, to access risk of thrombosis uh, is not currently recommended. So we don't send everyone for testing because it creates stress situation. It can give us a little of practical knowledge we can use to manage the patient. That's also you should understand. But at the same time, if we know that in the past the patient had, uh, for example, vein uh, thrombembolia or some other diff serious condition related to clot formation, then uh, we can discuss the plan what to do and how we can actually prognose. And unfortunately, we don't have any universal, as I said, some program or testing just to find out that this patient definitely would have clot formation. That's why we have to start this prophylaxis of thrombosis. When we are talking about pregnancy, it's a little bit different. And by the way, um, why I'm talking about this, because the British Society of uh, Hematologists um, published a very good guidelines uh, for uh, thrombophilia testing. And I like this guidelines. Also, this guidelines has some kind of discrepancy, but at the same time, it's quite clear and they give a lot of information uh, the doctor can use in their practice. According to these guidelines, uh, in most cases, it has to be a serious reason to do genotyping for thrombophilia because it's quite expensive test. And also the doctor should understand what this results means. Because if the doctor is not like, you know, good with results, then probably he or she has to refer the patient to genetics or to hematologist and do, and they will help to assess the risk factors. Again, as I said, mutation in genes, like changes in genes, are not equal to disease, to having a disease. Also, not every gene changes could be used as prognosis for your risk factors to have clot formation. Some genes absolutely harmless, I mean mutation in genes absolutely harmless, and that's why we can ignore them. Uh, knowing about these genes, and we're learning more about genes mutation. It's still like, I would say, probably 2-3% of knowledge we can get in the future. So it's just like the beginning of genetics. And maybe in 5 or 10 years, we'll have more information. Maybe we'll find some other tests to prognose, to predict clot formation in people, uh, especially if they have other risk factors. And it will help us to manage this patient. 
But right now we do need to run to the lab and be tested for genotype for thrombophilia. Just relax and have a healthy lifestyle. Uh, move, eat properly. And believe me, it's better than wait for something bad and doing nothing, just sit in front of TV or your computer, do not move, have extra weight, have a, be obese. So healthy lifestyle, it's probably the priority before you go into the lab and going through all the tests you don't need at the moment. So if you like this video, please press likes and subscribe to my channel because we will have more interesting video and also I will have more conversation with some specialists about different conditions and how we can treat these conditions and what we can do for prevention of diseases and other unpleasant events. Bye!